In the previous lecture, we discussed Kirchhoff's first and second rule. Now we're going to apply these two rules, which will help us solve the following electric circuit problem. So suppose we have the following electric circuit. So we have our resistors and we also have two batteries. So battery number one has an electromotive force given by 60 volts and battery number two has an electromotive force of 120 volts. So knowing these values and using Kirchhoff's rules, we want to calculate electric current I1, electric current I2, and electric current I3. So electric current I1 is essentially the electric current that passes through this middle wire. Electric current I2 is the current that passes through this upper wire. And electric current I1 is the electric current that passes through this lower wire. So we essentially have three different unknowns. So that implies we need three equations to solve for these three unknowns. So one of these equations we're going to obtain from Kirchhoff's first rule. And the other two equations we're going to obtain by using Kirchhoff's second rule. So let's begin by applying Kirchhoff's first rule. So by Kirchhoff's first rule, we know the electric current that is going into our junction A is equal to the sum of the electric currents that are flowing out of that same electric junction. So I1 is equal to the sum of I2 plus I3. So let's call this equation I. Now, we apply Kirchhoff's second rule to two different closed loops. So this is closed loop number one and closed loop number two. So closed loop number one begins at position A, goes to position G, to position D, C, B, and A. So this is our first closed loop. And the second closed loop is given by beginning at point A, going to B, to C, to D, to E, to F, and then back to A. So we have two different closed loops and we want to apply Kirchhoff's second rule to these two rules, to these two closed loops. Now notice once again, the electric current that flows through this section is I2, through this section is given by I1, and through this section, well, that's given by I3. So let's begin with this closed loop. So we're looking at loop A, G, D, C, B, A. So, we begin at point A, and our electric current given by I2 flows initially through this resistor. And because this is a positive charge, that means as it flows through our resistor, it will lose our voltage. So our first value is negative I2 multiplied by the resistance given by 30 ohms. So this product is obtained from Ohm's law, which tells us the change in voltage across a resistor is equal to the product of the electric current and the quantity of resistance. So next, our I2 travels into this intersection and our current becomes I1. Remember, this region has a current given by I1. And when I1 flows from the negative to the positive side of our battery, it gains a quantity of voltage equal to the electromotive force across this battery. So plus electromotive force of battery one. Next, that same current given by I1 flows through the following two resistors. And as it flows through those two resistors, it loses our voltage. So we have negative I1 multiplied by 1 ohm minus I1 multiplied by 5 ohms.
Now, if we look at this result and we sum up the different values, we get negative 30i2 plus 60 minus i1 minus 5i1. So, we essentially combine these two i's and we get the following result. 60 minus 30i2 minus 6i1. And this is equal to zero by Kirchhoff's second rule. So, let's call this equation 2i. Now, let's move on to the second loop. Now, we're examining the lower loop as shown in the following diagram. So, we're looking at loop A, B, C, D, E, F, and back to A. So, let's begin at position A, and now we're looking at the following section. So, our electric current I1 is flowing in the opposite direction as shown. So, that means as we go from A to B and from B to C, our voltage is gained. So, that means it's positive. So, the product of I1 multiplied by 5 omega plus I1 multiplied by 1 omega and now our positive charge is flowing from the positive to the negative electrode. So that means our EMF1 is negative. So we have negative EMF1 and now we're going from D to E. So now we're examining current I3 and because it's going in the opposite direction. Once again, it is gain. So when we go from D to E, it's positive I3 multiplied by 20 ohms. Now when we go from E to F, once again, it's positive I3 multiplied by 2 ohms. And when we go from the positive to the negative electrode of the second battery, we're losing voltage. So that means it's minus electromotive force E2. So, now we plug in our values for electromotive force E1 and E2. So, that becomes 60 and 120. So, we multiply these quantities, we get 5I1 plus I1, which becomes 6I1. We have negative 60 minus 120, which becomes negative 180. And we have 20I3 and 2I3, which becomes 22I3. So, this is equal to zero by Kirchhoff's second rule. So, now we applied Kirchhoff's first rule and second rule, so we have three equations and three unknowns. So now we can solve our equations for I1, I2, and I3. So let's call this equation 3i. So let's begin with equation 2i. From equation 2i, we can rearrange and solve for I2, and we see that I2 is equal to 60 minus 6i1 divided by 30. And likewise, we can take equation 3i and solve for I3 in terms of I1. So we take this equation and solve for I3 in terms of I1. We get 180 minus 6i divided by 22. Now we take equation I. So from equation I, we know that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. So I2 in terms of I1 is given by this equation, which is shown here. And I3 is given in terms of I1, and that's shown in this equation. So now we sum these up, we solve for I1 from this equation, and we see that I1 is equal to about 6.9 amps. So now we know the quantity of I1. We can use this equation to solve for I2 and that gives us 0.84 amps. And finally, we can use the value for I1 to solve for I3 using this equation and that gives us a value of about 6.3 amps.